hello friends today's topic is reproductive and sexual health and uh, as we have talked earlier about mental health and about stress we understand that sexual health and reproductive health is a very important part of overall well-being unfortunately for various reasons talking about sex is still a taboo in our society and in in spite of the fact that one suffers because of lack of dialogue lack of conversation we continue to feel that there is controversy whether we should talk to students growing up uh, children in school and youth in universities in spite of the worldwide research uh, in favor of and in spite of the psychologists educationists all around the globe uh agreeing that there is a desperate need for such dialogue need for such education need for availability of resources to youth there is still stigma and uh, let us understand how it is affecting youth in our country so to begin with uh let us think about how we come to know about reproductive health and sexual health in our country there is no dialogue at home parents are not majority of parents are not very comfortable talking about sex to their children school teachers even when in class 9 there is a clear cut chapter on reproduction uh, in human beings they tend to sort of rush through that chapter the topic some of the teachers have themselves said that uh, when i don't i don't believe in rushing through so what i do is i compare reproduction of plants so that uh, they they this topic can be handled so one way or the other we are all hesitant to answer the questions and queries that adolescents have the questions that youth have and we feel that you know like we came to know about it one way or the other by accident by hook or by crook similarly they would however our generation has paid the price of uh, incomplete answers of doubts and queries and it is entirely up to us the policy makers the adults to decide what we are going to do for the youth today so if we look at this question again how does one learn about reproductive health and sexual relations in india the answer that comes to my mind is how we learned so as an adolescent we grew up looking at either bollywood movies or other uh, regional movies all over our country and what we saw was that uh, there's a hero he's attracted to the heroine and he sort of tries to tease her uh to the extent some of the heroes in movies stalk the heroine they sing and dance around her follow her and someone who's irritated doesn't like those uh, advances somehow there is a turn of event and the heroine begins to get attracted to the hero they fall in love and live happily ever after this is what we see in one movie and the other then we see the other part of it where there's a villain in the movie who has all the bad intentions troubles the heroine and somehow uh, we all realize that that's the bad man and this is the good person and the girl the heroine should go to the good person there are number of questions that we do not address that we do not talk about that we do not discuss with growing teenagers also with youth if somebody is uh, trying to pursue or trying to push himself or herself over to a person is it important to t- uh, to be aware of our boundaries is the issue of consent important and if there is attraction from both side what are the boundaries as far as having sexual relations is concerned a uh, number of questions are unanswered and as far as today's youth today's teenagers they are way beyond the exposure is way beyond bollywood and regional movies they have online access 24/7 so they can see the world without having any adult or any professional talking to them about the difference between you know the facts about facts of life or between about birds and bees 
so what i feel is that the answer is people youth teenagers adolescents they learn from bollywood they learn from media images and online programs sources friends often this information is absolutely uh, not intended for education often this information is something that that is created to increase trps so that things look attractive things look tacky things look you know all sorts of uh, various ways of attracting attention which is not probably the right message that we want an responsible adolescent to get and when they go to their friends the friends are equally confused the friends are equally in the same stage and one way or the other through media influence they develop an opinion about sexual relations about what is healthy about how they take care of their reproductive health now another reason why we need to be very very considerate is that adolescent and youth are in a vulnerable position how are they vulnerable they do tend uh, are less they are less informed nonetheless they often have a sense of having unlimited power you talk to any youth any college student most of the time you'll get a message that they know all they understand all and of course they know how to manage things yes they know to an extent but with without complete information without complete dialogue with an adult without a discussion on attitudes on values on correct practices what happens is they are vulnerable to the situation there are instead instead of feeling they are vulnerable there are feelings of invulnerability and impulsiveness is as such a very uh, important aspect of behavior in youth and adolescents so all this all this leads to reckless and dangerous behavior which is of course not what we want from our health youth in order to stay healthy balanced empowered then another thing is that they are curious which is of course nature's way of uh, making us learn more in life but this curiosity leads to natural inclination to experiment which can be dangerous of course so this period of youth certainly is what us the adults the policy makers need to pay attention to this conflict between their own emerging values through the values the opinions the attitudes the beliefs that they get from the uh, media they get from their friends they get from the environment and this is in conflict with what their parents expect from them because all said and done parents come from either two or three uh, decades ago generation and after just by being in virtue of being an indian parent they have their own set of values and expectations so there's conflict and these conflicts they sort of try to express by uh, their aggression their dislike their disbelief their you know uh, uh, their conflict with the parents through experimentation and various law breaking activities so this is one type of group that we are talking about which expresses their conflict their anger their you know disagreement at the same time there's other side of uh, the coin where there is a large sector segment of youth who do not get into conflict but they passively listen the situation in both cases remain the same there are one who subdued there are the other who are aggressive but none of them have access to right information of course if they go to absolutely authentic correct websites fortunately in today's world they can get that information but how many of them do have a scope of having a dialogue about things that conflict them about worries they have you know so those facts remain now another question that comes to my mind is with this vulnerability can we leave the youth to fend for information themselves through available sources now that can be quite anxiety provoking at times and because 
on one way they realize that something can lead them to some uh, unhealthy situation dangerous situation at the same time there is a desire to fit in there is desire to show i am grown up and i can manage it i can handle it so there are a lot of conflicts they go through in that situation in that vulnerability how adequate it is how safe it is for our youth to manage on their own to learn on their own to understand on their own without any clinics or counseling centers available to them so uh, the answer what i feel is that too many repercussions of any uninformed decision that we can ignore why because uh, the repercussion of a sexual relationship the rep- repercussion is not just the consequence is not just physical you know they can be uh, emotional repercussion so when one indulges in sexual activity there is on one side if there's a steady partner if there's say marriage or if there's a clear cut a uh, desire to uh, live in with that person for a long period then there are chances of emotional bonding but if there are uh, experiments if there are uninformed decisions and the person concerned feels uh, there's a mistake feels probably there was not clear consent or feels in any way that this is not what he or she wanted to do it would have an emotional repercussion it would have social repercussion because all said and done they part of that society all said and done the youth is part of that family which probably does not agree to unless of course they have had a good healthy conversation about it so the repercussions are tremendous physical psychological social and the too many to ignore next i'd like to bring your attention to the slide where we understand what is the status at present the condition at present of adolescent and youth in india so they make up for around 22% of our population and which is a big portion and are a heterogeneous group so they vary in age they vary in marital status they vary in economic status cultural background religious belief etc so one program that we design for say uh, students of delhi university may not work probably for students who are studying in say uh, merit college or uh, any other uh, smaller town college because the exposure the attitudes the the conditioning the understanding is different from one place to another so there's the heterogeneous group that we have to deal with that we have to tackle with and so the program needs to be a little ple- uh, flexible corresponding to the indiv- uh, individual and the uh, sectional needs the uh, reproductive and sexual health program plans to increase the health seeking behavior in adolescent age group and provide them with the right knowledge that's what the objective is and this is what our national health mission also states considering that let us go to what is happening at the international uh, sector international level the international conference on population and development icpd 94 uh, is where we started participating in and what everybody realizes is that young people have a right to sexual and reproductive health and uh, this healthcare comes in many ways it comes through uh, dialogue it comes through uh, conversation and uh, there was a remarkable consensus among 179 governments so uh, this is what happened in 2014 however years have gone by and as far as each individual is concerned we do not see in many universities all over india any such direct reproductive and sexual health counseling happening any such dialogues happening any such workshops or a center or a counseling area which is assigned to reproductive and sexual health concerns and needs hence this is actually the need the right of young people let us go through some of the rights 
they have the right to information and education because it's their body it's their life they need to know what's right and what's wrong uh, other health needs for instance need for hygiene need for balanced diet all this is something we discuss every day we discuss in families we discuss in social groups we discuss with our teachers at our professional places but when it comes to another very important aspect we do not but let us remember as adults that this is the right that they have there is right to decide freely and responsibly on all aspects of sexual behavior so it is an individual's prerogative it is an individual's decision when with whom how one wants to get sexually involved so this is a right that we as adults need to recognize the right to own control and protect one's body it's so sad that uh, even even children are not often in many schools taught about how to protect their boundaries thanks to poxo act more and more schools are now getting equipped that they have to involve their students in the program they have to give that good touch back to education but in spite of that in spite of it happening in many schools there are other large number of institutions where youth children are not aware of their bodies boundaries not aware of the right to say no when they are uncomfortable in their body with anybody's touch or anybody's glance or any other advance so youth has that right to own control and protect one's body the right to be free of discrimination free of coercion free of violence many of the uh, not only bollywood but many of the other social media programs uh, internet series television programs directly indirectly give the message that it's okay if one segment sort of pursues or forces but these messages need to be clearly clearly shown to the youth to the adolescent and which is not possible unless we have a dialogue with them unless there is a corner where they can come and ask questions they come and discuss they discuss that they are not comfortable with the situation they are not comfortable with this idea is it the right thing so they have the right to uh, be free of discrimination they have the right to expect and demand equality they have the right to expect and demand full consent mutual respect in sexual relationships so all those rights how are we going to give them unless we give them education and an opportunity they have the right to have full range of accessible and affordable reproductive and sexual health services regardless of sex creed belief status or location so considering the framework of what are the individual needs and rights of our adolescent and youth we need to develop programs so when we uh, see that there's a lot of taboo about it when we see that it has raised controversies that why do we need sex education in school why do we need sex education in university probably there is some misunderstanding probably there is some misjudgment because we need to first understand what does reproductive and sexual health mean so when we are promoting good reproductive health it means that we are trying to promote a person who has complete physical mental social well being in all matters related to one's reproductive system in all matters related to understanding one's sexuality in all matters like it implies that people are able to have a satisfying and safe sex life we all understand nature has created the need to have sex or the pleasure is associated with sex so that human beings reproduce and not just human being all living things reproduce so nature has a very specific purpose now when we humans as social being we interact with each other we are living together inhabiting together yes there are social rules social the cultural values that we need to promote at the same time how do each individual 
understand their own sexual needs they understand and respect those needs and understand the appropriate healthy ways of satisfying those needs that comes only when there's a dialogue with the professional so now uh, besides that every individual's right as we just talked about to make their own choices and a healthy decision that ensures physical and socio emotional both safety as well as preparedness often the first uh, sexual episode or sexual activity happens with half preparedness that leads to various psychosocial emotional problems so that we need to uh, prevent that we need to prepare our youth for so that the generation stays more healthy there are less of uh, other repercussions that we'll talk about in the next half so some of the statistics that i want like to show that uh, have been studied that men in india are most like to have their first sexual activity intercourse at the age of 20 to 24 now mind you that's the age when we are in university or college and the data for women shows that it's a younger age 15 to 90 since it's a all india data so 15 to 90 largely because there are still uh many uh, segments of our country many areas where there's early marriage so 15 to 90 comes for women talking about sex is still a taboo and most of us have experienced that in cities where living in relationships are comparative live in relations are still accepted sex education is still not considered in schools and colleges exactly the point which i'm trying to make the government of india have in collaboration with the unfpa has drawn up a national action plan for introduction of urge with the following objectives one is facilitating adolescents to understand the perspective so understanding our body understanding the reproductive changes that happens understanding the uh, need for those changes understanding how to manage those changes to initiate a sense of self awareness to understand themselves and also to understand others to help adolescent manage their emotions to empower them with social skills now it is not just it sounds as if one is talking about sex but largely because it's part of our complete self complete well being so largely this program is about managing emotions managing social skills effectively communicating one's needs resisting peer pressure it's so important everyone if the youth are listening to me you would agree that most of the things that we do not want to do but still do are because of peer pressure so whether it's adolescent or it is youth in college peer pressure is a very important thing however if you have had uh, sessions programs seminars conferences on reproductive health chances are you more informed informed and more clear and more confident to resist uh, to resist peer pressure now uh, besides that to acquire information and education on reproductive health and sexual activities to help them to avoid vulnerability to risky behavior so the entire objective is that do, they do not get involved in risky behavior and stay safe to enable them to resist exploitation and general uh, it should be gender based violence now uh, also to understand the consequence of substance abuse and adopt preventive measures because often it has been seen with youth and with adolescents especially in cities where uh, using alcohol using uh, some drugs is pretty common now under the influence of substance there is higher chances of getting impulsive getting into sexual activity now all this can be prevented all those safety measures can be adopted only when one is prepared otherwise the peer pressure otherwise the drive to be part of the group to be to do the in thing to look cool etc 
it, uh, a teenager or a youth gets carried away and then the repercussions are huge. Then to help them understand the seriousness of the epidemic. So HIV and AIDS, we know our country is one of the top countries that has maximum number of youth with HIV. So one is HIV epidemic, the other is different other uh, sexually transmitted diseases. All that if we need to prevent, if we need the youth to understand the seriousness of these problems, we need to have dialogue with them. So the strategies for introduction of these objectives include of course awareness building, co-curricular activities, integration in the school curriculum and when we talk about university in the college health center or as far as possible in some sort of you know extracurricular activities and the most important is development of life skills. The base major 10 life skills that WHO talks about is probably need of not only uh, each adolescent, each growing child, but also youth uh, which are in college, university, so that they can carry on, understand, learn these life skills and carry on with them throughout their adulthood. Move on, let's see what are the topics that need to be covered in university and college level programs all over the globe in other uh, developed countries. The universities do include uh, regular uh, counseling centers in their health center and counseling centers do make it uh, a regular affair to talk about reproductive and sexual health. There are programs, there are seminars, there are webinars. However, in India, if we have policy makers or uh, lecturers or student welfare people looking at this lecture, I would like to appeal that we need to cover these topics for instance consent, how important it is, how important it is to prevent coercion, coercive me methods, so consent, communication in sexual situation, assault prevention, abstinence as one of the safest mean and other ways of safer sex, drinking and drugs and then matching it with sex, these all topics need to be covered through pamphlets, through talks, through discussions, through debates so that they are aware and they are able to find a platform where they can talk about these issues and concerns. Awareness about combining knowledge, combining attitude and behavioral patterns on reproductive and sexual health. So these are some of the topics I think must be covered. Then what would be the curriculum goals and objectives? The goal is of course health complete health, complete well-being, which helps in prevention of both STD, HIV and unwanted or early pregnancy. Focusing on specific behaviors leads to these health goals. So whether it's abstinence, whether it is use of contraceptives, those clear messages about these behaviors help adolescent, help youth to cope up with the stress or cope up with uh, correct management of their sexual behavior. Addressing multiple sexual psychosocial risk and protective factors, empowering students to make informed decisions regarding their well-being and encourage responsible foundation upon which they can successfully build throughout their adult lives. So once the right attitudes, once the right beliefs, in what is healthy, what is in my scope, what is my duty, what is my responsibility and looking at sexual behavior as a very responsible behavior. Once that attitude develops, once youth is empowered with that, this behavior continues throughout their adult life. The result of this, this is uh, one study where uh, the sample size was around 3,200 students and what they studied is that this particular set of students did get Arsh uh, education in school. So the goal was to analyze the significance of sex education in school and what are its effect in promoting healthy behavior among university students. So when we start young, when we start at school level, the results show that students who had sex education in school 
they mentioned more often having fewer sexual risk behaviors so they were able to say no they were able to understand what goes with what you know so that that's the best part so once we they have there are research done by rees it's an old research 2011 and i'm sure there'll be more if we look through but even when the program is done in school the youth felt they had reasonable knowledge they had positive attitudes and the skills to use uh, contraceptives and their study demonstrates positive association between receiving this education and protective behavior knowledge motivation and skills so worldwide it's happening there's another uh, study where they suggest that there should be all one curriculum so where they provide advice where in university we provide advice not only on the issues of gender but also human rights also sexuality also reproductive sexual health also hiv so they thought of including you know all this in uh, together consisting of eight modules the first was sexual rights and human rights so uh, it's not something out of the blue one is asking for that's also one of the human right then understanding gender how it is functioning believing in equality gender norms understanding how culture influences gender norms and how one needs to respect the differences and similarities so uh, then third was sexuality exploring how culture and prevailing norms affect the attitudes practices and experiences and talking about it learning about it then fourth is interpersonal relationship now uh, whether it is uh, whether it is social health whether it is emotional health or sexual health everywhere communication is the key now communication is of course dependent on our attitudes our beliefs our values so if those attitude beliefs values are set right through these programs interpersonal relationship also strengthen so their their ability to communicate assertively communicate appropriately also takes place so that's another module then communication and decision making so decision making skill is a very important life skill and once we have these programs life skills develop one grows overall uh, and able to take decisions not only in sexual matters but also in other personal issues uh in life other different issues as well so then the sixth module is about the body the puberty the reproduction as i just mentioned in our country often in school where it is a mandatory part of syllabus we try to rush through this aspect but the requirement is that we talk about the details we talk about the healthy care of reproductive health uh, reproductive organs uh, we talk about uh, how how the puberty is important in our growth how the changes during puberty make us comfortable uncomfortable how to accept those changes and move on so these are this is another module and yet another is reproductive health which includes of course hiv prevention as we had discussed earlier then advocating another most important thing is that we promote it we talk about it and we understand the need so finding ways to promote social changes that will lead to better health better justice and equality for everyone so this is a 2009 article where it happened so now when sexual and reproductive health needs are not met i have been so far talking about what would happen how how beneficial it would be if we have such regular programs for our youth but there are also studies that see that what would happen if these are not met if this is not provided and if we look around in our society if we open the newspaper every day we can see some of these connections as well when these needs are not met youth is deprived of the right to make crucial choices about their own bodies about their own future and what happens then it has an impact on their family welfare their future generation how future because uh, consider an example where uh, 
a college student who takes admission in uh, a college in a university to do well academically to take that degree to complete the course and move on and stabilize in a career and move on with their life uh, get stuck with an uh, uninformed decision get stuck or gets disturbed due to uh, unwanted say say for example unwanted pregnancy or get stuck because uh, they have made some error for instance we'll talk about technology how that leads to risky behavior in teenagers and youth today there are uh, you know this sexting happening and those text messages how it can lead to various risks and social shaming or uh, you know unwanted uh, repercussions so once a youth a college student or a university uh, any college masters any level student is involved in these issues it will have effect in their in their mental health it would had have an effect on their emotions it would certainly distract them from their goals their academic tasks hence affecting their future uh, behavior future career goals etc so youth is deprived to make the right decision then there is threat to compromised gender equality so which is which is a big big thing gender norms gender equality as it is in our country in number of situation we see there is social imbalance which we need to work on and of course slowly we are trying to but if these programs if these conversations if these discussions if these clarity that consent is important just because somebody is your wife somebody is your husband somebody is your boyfriend somebody is your girlfriend somebody is a close friend you do not have right to presume that they have given consent for you, uh, to you for uh, being sexually promiscuous for being for initiating a sexual activity there has to be a clear understanding that consent is important gender equality is important then what happens is due to lack of awareness and proper guidance uh, adolescent and youth become more vulnerable and we have talked about this vulnerability earlier besides that poor understanding and poor restraint with technological accessibility so there is social media there is easy porn accessibility nowadays leave aside cases as a as a practitioner as a psychologist earlier i used to have problems and cases with porn addiction in adolescent sometimes in youth but nowadays i am having that those cases referred to me with uh, uh, children as young as grade 2 as young as grade 2 because uh because uh, it's so accessible so when we do that digital intimacy is on the rise sexting self esteem it has all connection all relation which has long term implication for their employment ability and reputation so developmental approach according to me it should be the sex education the reproductive and sexual health education it should be basically an intrinsic part of being human and learning about family learning about friendship learning about growing up sex education matters in pre primary i think it should start with pre primary where children if not children who are uh, able to understand adults through parents through mothers we can give them information about good touch bad touch it should start at that level going on to primary where the bodies begin to change so there needs to be a clear cut conversation with teachers about the menstruation about uh, changes in bodies in girls and boys so that they are prepared when it happens to them sex education matters at home because children want their parents to be the first people to talk however parents are reluctant so they can be even school based programs for parents how they can talk to their children how they can answer the questions that the children have in secondary level of course they have new pressures from their peers and they are reaching more independence so that's the time we need to talk to children about the feelings of love feeling of romance what do they really mean when they say they fall in love when they have crush on someone so if there is an adult a psychologist a counselor who's comfortably talking to them addressing their queries 
uh, making them realize it's a normal part of growing up and how this phase would grow and they'll, they'll outgrow it and go to the next level. It becomes easy for them. There's no hush hush worry or uh, insecurity. In universities where the sexual belief and behaviors are getting stabilized, it is so important that with more freedom, with more opportunity to develop intimate relationships, there, there is clear-cut need for information. There's clear-cut need for resources available and there's need for conversation with the professionals about, about the queries and questions one has. So in conclusion, I would like to say that the services that should be provided for youth, for young people, include information and counseling on sexual and reproductive health issues, promotion of healthy sexual behaviors. And of course, that promotion would happen if there's dialogue, if there's information available, if there are resources, if there's a corner where you can go and ask your questions. Because each individual would be at a different level as far as understanding, as far as queries, as far as beliefs, as far as doubts are concerned. Then family planning information, counseling and methods of contraception, because if we don't talk about it, it doesn't mean sex doesn't happen. If we don't talk about it, it doesn't mean that youth does not indulge in sexual behavior. So if they do, they should know what is safe, they should know what is protection, they should know what is healthy. Then testing and counseling services for pregnancy. Every university, if not every college, has a health center. Most of the people have a set of doctors. They should, along with that, have facility of testing, have facility of understanding the conflicts and conditions youth go through. They should have testing facility, not only for pregnancy, but HIV and other STIs, so that uh, the problem can be nipped in the bud at the beginning and there can be prevention, there can be assurance that youth continue to stay healthy, protected, safe. Appropriate referral linkage, that's also another important thing that once the health center has those uh, cases, has those pro students who have one problem or the other, so besides education, besides providing resources, there is a linkage where they can be referred to other health services, other health uh, issues. So this is what I propose, what I understand, and I would really be happy if there are certain questions or queries related to the idea. And the feedback is always welcome. Thank you.